as a person that shapes the narrative, when do you decide that it's right for a client? And we see so often in the news, every day, stars are coming under fire. When do you decide, make a statement, or just shut up, and it'll go away? I think it really depends on who they are. I think it's really hard for celebrities to shut up. I think it's really hard for well-known brands to generally shut up once it becomes a really, really, really big story. You know, that book, The Tipping Point, if you haven't read, you know, Absolutely. of course, a great marketing book. The Tipping Point is a great book. Go read it if you haven't. But The Tipping Point is an important narrative. In other words, how big is the story that you need to respond, that you need to comment, is something you need to understand. So I think when people talk about, you know, crisis, what constitutes a crisis is really important. So, you know, I got a name drop here. I, I, I lectured last year at Harvard Business School on crisis PR. And, you talk about and, and now you're at LIU Brooklyn. <laughs> now I'm in LIU Brooklyn. But, but last year I lectured to a bunch of classes on um, crisis PR at Harvard Business School. Mm -hmm. And we get to, and there was a narrative about, there was a case about United Airlines when they dragged that doctor off the plane by his face. Do you remember mm -hmm. that story? Yep. Okay. You know why that wasn't really a crisis for United? Because they're very short it was a very, it, it didn't materially fix the, affect their business. Something like 55% of people said they would never fly United again. But guess what? Out of 98% of the cities in America, you don't have a choice. And how many of you now who are flying, what you're doing, tomorrow you need to be in Washington, tomorrow you need to be in California. You know what you're all checking? What's the price and what's the departure? And that's it. Because it's not that you have 75 different choices. You have three choices. And that's in New York City. Pretend you're in Baltimore, there's one airline. Pretend you're in a hub of United. I don't know what United hubs are. So that was a short-term crisis. That was not a fundamental crisis. You talk about fundamental crisis, you know, the coronavirus now. That's a fundamental crisis for the, for the country of China, for tourism, for cruise lines. That's not a road bump, right? That is fundamentally affecting the gross national. Anybody here going to travel to China anytime soon? No. So no. you better believe that tourism, if you own a hotel in China right now, you're terrified. Okay, let's say you're talking huge. Um, Dominican Republic the, the, last year, the, those murders. You remember the, yep. all those people killed you know, at Dominican Republic? Those are fundamental, humongous, humongous, humongous crises. T talk to me specifically about scandal, right? Not crisis, scandals. Say Matt Lowers, your client. He doesn't make a statement. But by not making a statement, it's almost like he made a statement. His career plummeted. It's over for him. Um, nobody survived the Me Too movement, and that's another discussion that we Except can have. Except for your president. And when you look, and let's say you are advising a Trump. Has he completely changed what PR has become? Because his thing is deny, 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 and it seems to work. President Trump like him or not, is a master at public relations. Make no mistake, when you talk about defining the narrative, this is a person that has completely, he is not an A-plus in PR, he is an A-plus, plus, plus, plus. Number one, he's reshaped the whole concept of media. He doesn't need media. He does not need anybody. You know why? He says something on Twitter and everybody follows. For years I've said, I wrote a book in 2011, you can all go For and get For immediate release. For immediate release. You can go get the book, it was written in 2011. I said, if I have a big superstar, I'm not giving an exclusive to anybody. Because I can go out and say whatever I want, whenever I want, and I don't need Fox or CNN or the New York Times because they're all going to run whatever they say. And Trump realizes that. Mm -hmm. President Trump is a master at shaping and reshaping narratives, shaping and reshaping stories. But I want to stay focused in terms of when does somebody respond? It has, to be a, it has to be a fundamental big story for a big brand to respond. Um, you know, and sometimes you don't. You know, when you talk about... I have a, uh, you know, I think there's varieties of times when you can respond and there's times when can you can Can I ask respond. you specific? I might not answer. You can okay. ask. <laughs> Fair enough. If you represented Gail King, she does a, an interview and as a journalist, she asks a question that many found to be offensive about Kobe Bryant and his legacy and the rape accusations that he had 10, 20 years ago, whatever. How does she reply? What would you have... It wasn't just, you know, that wasn't about Gail King's statement. That was about Gail King's statement followed by 
Snoop Dogg and others making comments about Gail King's statement. So what would you tell Therefore, Gail? Gail King had to Gail King had to respond. Gail King had no choice, I believe, but to respond. Um, because it wasn't just that Gail King said something. It was Gail King said something, and then Snoop Dogg and others said A, B, C, and D. She had to respond. She had no choice because she lost control of the narrative. And, and as a prominent black journalist, she can't lose support of a big constituency. So it's not just about you know, people crowing and crying. You have an important constituency to her who has to, you have to, play, you have to answer them. You have to play to them. You can't ignore this community that's so much a part of who you are. One more question for you, and then we'll move on. Speaking of African-American constituency, we now have our former mayor of New York, Michael Bloomberg, jumping in his presidential race. But <coughs> while he was mayor of New York, he instituted the stop and frisk program. Now he wants to be the president of the United States, and it's coming back to haunt him. What would be your recommendation to him? tough. You know, <laughs> the problem, you know, You're the again, master, Ron. Again, what these guys, Bloomberg, Trump, others, you know, it's completely changed. You got a camera everywhere you go. And both Bloomberg and Trump are zillionaires who didn't become famous overnight. It's not like, you know, Bernie Sanders. Nobody knows anything about Bernie Sanders except he's a politician, mm -hmm. right? He's been a politician for 20 years. Obama was nobody before he was a, before he was a senator. He wasn't a Bloomberg and Trump have been well-known people for forever. They've had yeah. cameras on them forever. Um, I think it's tough. I think that this presidential race is, um, I think the presidential race is very tough, very difficult, no matter who runs against whom. It's difficult. But you're not answering the question. <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> <laughs>